Uh... All right, so editing Avery here, and I really shouldn't be talking to you right now as as the editor, but ECE keeps making my job so much easier by changing the professors every year so that the information that I have to offer you guys is irrelevant. And what I mean by that is that John Madden, who was my professor for ELEC 315, is not teaching, at least for next year. So, that means half of the stuff in this video that I will be talking about is irrelevant. ECE, why you do this to me? I'm actually trying to help students out and you're actively trying to sabotage me and future students by doing this. Please stop doing this. Just if you're gonna have bad professors, at least keep them and don't keep rotating them out with other bad professors. Uh... As you can see, this is a decision that I unconditionally support. But for the rest of this video, I really, really do hope despite the irrelevance, that it somewhat does help you for ELEC 315. I really sure hope so. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my third year of electrical engineering at UBC. Of the nine courses that I took this year, one of these courses was ELEC 315. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience of taking ELEC 315 during term one of the 2024-2025 school year with Professor John Madden. And all of the information in this video is subject to change in the future, such as grading schemes, assignment and exam formatting, and course content. Lastly, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. All right, so what is ELEC 315 all about? In this course, you'll learn about electronic materials and devices, covering the fundamental aspects of basic electronics components such as semiconductors, dielectrics, piezoelectrics, magnetic materials, and their applications in devices such as diodes and transistors. This course is offered in both semesters during the winter term, and during my year, term one was taught by Professor John Madden, and term two was taught by Professor Payman Servati. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how ELEC 315 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Each week, you will have four hours of lectures where our professor went through the course content through his lecture slides. To be honest, the lectures weren't really all that helpful for my friends and I, and they also weren't mandatory either, so perfect recipe for skipping them. Additionally, Professor Madden also posted his videos that he made for each of his lectures during the pandemic onto Canvas, so it was really easy to learn the content outside of class. Basically, what I would do is that I would take the notes outside of class and then have his videos playing at 2x speed with Welcome to Materials with Madden playing at the start of every single video. If you know, you know. We also had these weekly participation quizzes to complete as well. They just had some simple multiple choice questions on them, usually between 10 to 20 questions long. And they're marked for completion only, so as long as you do them, you'll get the mark. But even if you do want to try to get 100% on all of them, you can take these quizzes an unlimited number of times. In terms of assignments, we had semi-weekly web work assignments to complete. For us, these web work assignments had limited attempts and usually had around 18 to 20 questions on them. For some questions, they did also require us to submit a written copy of our answers as a canvas assignment, like drawing a band diagram for a certain question. For course materials, Madden heavily referenced the Understanding Modern Transistors and Diodes textbook by Paul Friantar. But in all honesty, I was able to get through the course without looking at the textbook at all, so it's really up to you if you'd like to use it or not. Now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in ELEC 315. We started off with an introduction to quantum mechanics to understand what's going on at the absolute smallest scale. In this unit, we covered the photoelectric effect, how electrons act as waves and particles at the same time, Schrodinger's equation and how to derive the solution for it in a particle in a box, and atomic orbitals as discrete states. We also covered bonding as it pertained to quantum mechanics, electronic spin and conduction, 
and how materials are classified based on their conduction bands and valence bands. We then moved on to semiconductors covering bonds and doping to create p-type and n-type regions in semiconductors, what a band diagram looks like for both p-type and n-type materials, electron mobility and conductivity, the relationship between conduction and temperature, and the relationship between doping densities and carrier densities. We also learned about the Fermi function, Fermi level calculations, and what happens when you bring an n-type and a p-type material into contact, and what the band diagrams look like for a p-n junction. After semiconductors was dielectrics, first covering what a dielectric was before moving on to finding out where the dielectric constant comes from different forms of polarization, such as electronic polarization, oriental polarization, and ionic polarization, and dielectric breakdown. The last unit covered piezoelectrics and magnetic materials, starting off with what piezoelectricity is and the piezoelectric effect, before going over different sources of magnetism, what diamagnetism is and the properties of diamagnetic materials, magnetic torque and moments of magnetic materials, and permeability. And that's about everything that you're going to learn in ELEC 315. After the midterm, <laughs> he pulls trick. up the answer key in live time while we're all still standing and there. And then 20 we all people line up and tell him he's wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like, here's the answers, guys. <laughs> like, that's, 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 not that's, right. wrong. that's not arsenic. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a one-word answer question. It's completely it really multiple, multiple choice. choice. <laughs> has <laughs> one page of answers, first one's wrong. In terms of the grading scheme and the exams for ELEC 315, here's the breakdown of everything that we were graded on and the weights associated with each item. If I remember correctly, our participation quizzes and web work assignments were weighted at 25%. Our midterm was weighted at another 25%, and the final exam was worth 50%. For John Madden's section, he posted a bunch of past midterms and final exams for us to study from in preparation for our exams. And at least for the midterm, it was quite helpful. But only when the solutions were correct. Yes, there were some mistakes in the past exam solutions that you do need to be wary of when you're studying. What was nice about the midterm exam was that the format was actually relatively the same as the past exams, and there would always be a select few questions that would always show up. For example, there would always be a question about deriving Schrodinger's equation for a 1D, 2D, or 3D particle in a box. And there would also always be a question about drawing the band diagram for a forward bias or reverse bias PN junction. And these questions would make up a pretty decent chunk of the exam. So you basically locked in at least 25% of your exam grade if you just attempted or looked at the solutions for the past midterms. But just remember again, be wary of the exam solutions as you don't want to experience what my friend Evan went through. I remember I got one question wrong because I copied it straight off the answer key because it's the same as one of the past midterms. <laughs> and the answer key was wrong, so I got the question wrong. Like, <laughs> In terms of difficulty, the midterm was pretty fair since the questions were very similar or exactly the same as the past midterms that Madden gave us for practice. But our final was absolutely brutal. It was nothing like any of the past finals that he gave us. And I walked out with like, 15% of my final exam grade just gone because I didn't know how to answer the problem and just left it blank. Allegedly, he created our final exam the day before our exam date and apparently didn't realize that his final was nothing like the practice finals or the course content that he taught us. All right, now onto some survival tips, advice, and miscellaneous things to know before heading into ELEC 315. I'm of the opinion that unless you're really interested in the research and work around semiconductors and electronic materials, there's really not much application of this course other than maybe in solar cell and solar panel development. In other words, for most people, this is going to be a course that you're going to take nothing away from. But at least for John Madden's section, the way that most people studied for the exams was just by memorizing how to do the questions on the past midterms and finals. This worked for the midterm as he kept a lot of the questions the same, but this did not work on the final as we had barely seen any of the questions that were on the final before. Also, just if you are in John Madden's section, prepare for the course to be a little bit disorganized. As knowledgeable as he is as a researcher, he's 
not really the most suited to teaching as you'll find errors in the homework assignments quite frequently, the solutions to the past midterms and finals as well, and course materials just not being where they should be. So just be warned about that if you're heading into this course and also into John Madden's section. And for those of you who are curious, I scored a 76% in ELEC 315 and the class average was 75%. Based on this grade, I must have severely bombed the final because I was going into the final well above the class average based on my midterm grade. And I guess I wasn't lying when I said the final was brutal. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before heading into ELEC 315. I really, really hope this video helps you guys out so you guys don't have to suffer as much as I did in my third year. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.